All right, guys, today I'm going to show you a bunch of different belt setups. We got some basic pouches, we got some work shorts, Occidental Diamondback, the whole shebang. So, I want to help you with your purchasing. So, I'm going to give you the idea of what I went through, some mistakes that I made, some pros and cons of each configuration. And I'll get started with the very basic. This is just a Husky, um, you know, pouch. And you got, uh, I added a tape holder to it. If you're just doing some running around, you got a lot of room for screws. You got a hammer loop, tape. You could throw your jab saw in there if you're a drywaller. That's awesome. That thing's pretty durable too. I've had that for a long time. It treated me well for a while. These are black ladder work shorts. They got just about everything you need. They are. They got some great compartments. They're not attached to you so that they don't really dig into you at all. And if you don't like wearing belts, those are a spectacular option. I do recommend them. I have a lot of pairs of these. Sometimes if I don't feel like wearing a belt someday, I'll throw those on. Obvious cons are you gotta empty it to wash it. You gotta take some stuff out if you're gonna be taking a ride in the truck or something. So not for everybody, but I mean this, you got your combo square, chisel, all your you know markers, uh, pencils, mini square, nippers. I mean, it, it's really good options. Um, I got some diamond back miters here, which are amazing belts with really good features they have these features here where you can put all sorts of different sizes of bits pencils nail sets they stitched it across here for different depths just a really good idea on their part as well as they have the full-size sleeve in the back for a full-size bar they have an extra loop in the back if you like to carry you know a soft strike finish hammer Obviously they have the holes here, and with Diamondback, what those holes do for you is they allow you to add a hammer sleeve or a flat bar sleeve, and that's really what got me kind of leaning towards the Diamondback was actually as simple as the hammer sleeve, the bar sleeve, the full size bar option. I mean, if you, if you do this a lot, you understand that, yeah, sometimes you will spend $500 for the little things. So those are kind of a, a really enticing feature to those uh, particular belts there this is my partner's this is just his finished setup and it's a really great setup this costs about 330 total with the um, suspenders and he wears this a lot because sometimes I mean most of the time if you're doing remodeling you really don't need your full-size uh, framing setup all the time you know so he's got a lot of stuff going on in here as you can see, you know, bevel square, chisel, torpedo, small bars, bits, etc. On this side, it's a little simpler. You know, you just have your basic, it's the five in one with the hammer loop. He's a righty, so he likes his hammer on the right side. You can see the, you know, utility of these small little things. You know, nail set, pencil, you can put your knife in here. Sometimes you're carrying random things. You don't always need your tool belt full because you're gonna grab that one little tool that you got sometimes that you don't need all the time throw it in there and you're good to go so that is about 330 total 330 dollars total there this is his framing setup which is the Occidental beltless and it is a great great thing that Occidental offers is the beltless systems because they really are just a comfortable setup you can hardly notice that it's there you know obviously you would have a hammer in here as a righty and it really just, you don't even notice it's there. It's a, it's a great option to have. So if you're sick of wearing a belt around your waist, you don't like going up and down and bunching up here, then that's the way to go. That set up there is about $450. And, uh, you know, if you're wearing something every day, it's probably worth every single penny. This is the belt that I wore for a long time. I did have suspenders on it, but this is, uh, this is just a smorgasbord and this is one of the mistakes that I made was I purchased this belt for a righty. This is righty configurations because I'm a lefty but most of the box stores, you know, the $30 to $100 range belts, they don't come in left-handed configurations. So I purchased these based on what I was used to and that was kind of a mistake in that I should have purchased what I knew I was going to be using for the next 30 years, you know. So I practiced wrong because that's with the options I had from the box stores. But that's why I had to add this hammer loop. On this side, there's the hammer loop. I like this for my tape there, at, you know, when I did use this belt. Um, 
a lot of storage. Probably the most of any Occidental you're gonna find is this 9085 is the name of this belt. One of the best features I think is this chisel sleeve came in here. I took it out. It goes all the way through down to the bottom. So you can actually put that right there and that is an amazing spot for it. Doesn't really bother me that I can't entirely access both of these at the same time. No big deal. It's just got a digital bevel square in there and some long bits. That's not a big deal. This side's just your fat lip and I actually had I bought two of these clip-ons here and I put them in here as well and that was basically just to separate a bottle of water, my phone, you know, pretty basic but overall an amazing setup. You really have honestly everything you could need. You know this is like I said the most I think the most compartments in a single Occidental. I also keep my my safety goggles hanging off me at all times. I recommend it. They do not bother you as bad as you think you would. You think you'd bend down or bang into stuff and they really, it's like they're not even there, but you're gonna notice if your eyeball's not there someday. So I recommend hanging some goggles on your belt. Definitely worth it. Now, oh, another thing I forgot to mention is the pack outs and the rigids. You can just take these out, your fasteners, throw them in there, carry them out. When you want to change sizes of fasteners, you can just take these out, go get your other size fastener, put those back in your organizer, put the other size fastener in your belt. Great option. You know, just, that, that works out very well. We do that on a lot of our belts. This here is the belt that I modified myself. I actually added the diamond back flat bar sleeve over here. I think it works amazing actually. And this is why I really am not going to be able to settle on the diamond back setup that I got that we can go over in a second. But this has the option to hang your your screws, your screw guns or your nailers right there. Can't be beat really. You have the option to do as many clip-ons as you want in the back just so that you can get your extra fasteners and stuff. I keep my tape right here, not in this belt, but right here. It just hooks on. I really like this. Um, I would say that because I made it, it's my favorite setup, but that's not the only reason. It's really just been perfect for everything that I do other than framing. My framing belt, obviously this was my framing belt. We'll go over my newly purchased left hand orientation framing belt shortly. I'm actually going to pass this one on to my cousin. He recently started working with me, so that'll be a huge upgrade for somebody who just got in the trades to have one of the nicest belts available. Now this is the diamond back. These are the Loki pouch is right here. I believe that's their newest pouch. This is the Loki and this is the, the um, Flux and I really like them but you know they sold this as you know your tape goes there. There's a lot of vulnerabilities there. You're going to be climbing down ladders and stuff's going to be falling off. Same with if you if you if you're going to be hooking your screw guns here. They're just it's a little tight over here. You know these are banging off your legs. And you got, if you're coming down ladders, these are gonna get a little bit, you know that over the course of going up and down ladders thousands of times, something's gonna get knocked off and somebody's gonna get knocked out. It's not gonna go well. They do have great storage. I mean, if I didn't make this belt, then I would absolutely go to this belt because of just the amount of extra storage kind of that you get. I don't have the outside storage, but the sacrifice that I have is my tape's in the right spot and I can hook my you know, nailers and screw guns on that proper side. So another thing about these is with the sleeve, the hammer holster sleeve, if you have a grippy handle, you know, it doesn't really like to go in and out. If you have a more, you know, hand, a handle with more mileage on it, much more worn, you're not gonna have many issues. Same with a wooden handle, you won't have many issues. Um, back here, obviously you got either your flat bar, or your combo square. I think that having this particular Husky really eliminates the need to have a 12 inch combo square hanging off you. So I would say that this is the better idea to have that. Um, there's obviously room for, you got your glue, you got your filler and a lot of extra. What I did find was when you have anything in these, you really, it's very tight. You know, things don't like to go in and out because this is taking up most of the space that these all have to offer. Same with this side. This pouch here is essentially useless, especially if there's anything in this one. 
and this really doesn't have a lot of depth so you're not I mean even pencils stick up to about here another issue was the uh, bits I tried to uh, break these in I put a lot of different bits in them the smallest pilot bits everything they really didn't want to break in that's the beauty of the leather from the you know um, occidental is these really form to your bits or your nail sets things like that one of the biggest things that I noticed wearing this was unlike the occidentals that have about seven inches you know of weight distributed across the belt itself was these have very little of very little grab you only have about three inches three and a half inches of velcro there when these are all loaded up you really feel it and that's one of the downfalls that I found with these particular types of belts all the way from these to the miters and it just it makes the same exact tools feel heavier one final little critique is the Cobra clip is an amazing option if you don't need to put on winter jackets sweatshirts if you're not changing your attire very often or even if you have suspenders and you can leave your belt loose this Cobra clip is the way to go but the issue is, is if you aren't somebody who wears suspenders every day and you do put on winter jackets and sweatshirts then you're gonna need to adjust this more often than you might want to and the issue with that is that you actually have to take off your pouch on the adjustment side and it actually does take a few minutes because you know you only get so many chances to get it perfect that one time so it's going to take you a couple tries it's just it's not as pragmatic as it's meant to be i think um, but still diamondback has very specialized pouches i think they do an amazing job with their with a lot of their lines and i know i kind of already went over these but there was kind of a reason that i don't think i'm going to go with them and there's just a couple of design flaws you can see with the hammer loop location where you screw your hammer loop in or your flat bar holster those just aren't exactly the same you can see these aren't exactly the same and those hide some very usable storage there as well as really hinder the ability to use this and I could maybe overlook that but the issue and I'm sure that if you only bought one you wouldn't even know that those are issues but I have a problem with the fact that is this indicative of potential manufacturing flaws across an entire brand I don't know I'm not bashing diamond back like I said if I didn't make my belt I would have chosen that setup to be my everyday and it would have been awesome this setup here is about 250 all in this Loki with the um, flux that thing is about 385 all in if I put the flat bar holster and the hammer holster yeah you're talking a little bit more obviously about 60 bucks but this is the Occidental that I actually recently purchased because it was on sale. I think I got it for like 190 bucks on Max Tool. Um, I'm going to configure it as kind of a beltless. I'm just going to either cut this off, cut this side off, or just tape that down. I'm going to fold this back and probably Chicago screw it because I just love the option to go down and up without having anything at your waist. So this is a left hand orientation. That's kind of why I went with it, that and obviously price, kind of opened the door for me to get away from something that I'm not really practicing properly with, and I think this is going to work out for me. This setup here with the hip buddies is about 500 Now, that's something that I recognize as a con of Occidental is they, unless you buy like the adjuster fit or the suspend a vest or whatever, then you really have to add a lot to them to get them to that comfort level that you're going for and these hip buddies aren't cheap they're like 60 bucks if if you're adding you know if you're adding um your knife holster and your hammer holster here you're about 35 bucks each on those so i can totally understand people not wanting to go any further after you purchase a 350 450 dollar belt you don't want to have to go the extra mile and spend money on things that should probably already be there so that's where the diamond bag kind of is superior in that regard they seem to offer everything in one even though these are more expensive it's probably a wash at the end of the day like if i threw suspenders on these and outfitted them the same exact way you'd probably be about 100 150 more into the diamond bag the biggest issue that diamond that uh Austin has across the board has always been their tape holders this is a regular 25 foot tape and there is absolutely no reason that it should be so difficult to get these in and out and one of the biggest issues too is that you always have to put them in upside down 
and if you, you just can't get them in this way properly you gotta soak this in hot water put like a 35 or 40 foot tape in there and let it sit for a few days it just it's, it just seems like an oversight this is something that has take I have taken the time to break in but it isn't something that I wear every day anymore so that's it that's a huge issue with Occidental you can go online you can look at all the reviews you can see all the people upset that they're 25 foot Stanley you know the most basic tapes very narrow, low profile. They don't even fit very well in what Occidental sells as a 35 foot tape holster. So that to me is just why. It, it's, it makes no sense to me. I will probably cut this tape off, cut this tape holder off because I don't keep it on that side anyway. I'm going to keep it over here. I might cut this off as well and just add, you know, I might cut it off, take this patch off, put it there and make that a tape clip. It is what it is. I can, you know, you can do whatever you want with your belt. Some mistakes that I made too, nothing crazy. I bought this, maybe you would like this, I don't, it was like, I think $37, and I was like, oh, that's perfect for what I think I'm going to need, it wasn't, it was awful, this thing sticks way out, your hammer's flopping all around, clacking on this thing, it's just not a good one, this hammer holster here, I had it for a while on me, but the issue was that where I keep it, similarly to this one right here, it curls back with a hammer, and that digs into you, so that's why I went with this longer one. And you know it's nice because it also has a pencil holster that's a good little feature I mean they have it as you can put like needle nose in there and stuff but to me you're reaching for your hammer all the time you don't want to have something sticking way out or into your gut so another thing about what people might not want to have to do if you buy a really nice belt you might not want to have to buy all these extra parts and pieces maybe I'm just needy maybe I have too high of expectations um, but overall I just did this so that I can hope to help you not make the same mistakes as I did if you're maybe a lefty and you're used to a right-handed setup because that's what you bought at the big box store when you got out of high school just think ahead on what you're gonna properly want to train yourself on and this is about $2,900 total in belts so nobody needs to spend that much nobody should ever spend that much that's why I'm doing this so that maybe you guys can save a little time save a little research save a little money and say that's what works for him maybe that can work for me maybe I can modify the belt that I have you know it's just a, a regular Timberland leather belt with some Chicago screws you know have at it don't don't be afraid to drill some holes in your own belt and spend 60 cents on some Chicago screws and cut up a $15 leather belt if that's what it's gonna take for you to have the setup that you want because I mean I I would say that I went a lot of years without even thinking that I should be drilling into my own belts why? I mean, who cares? So do whatever you want. I hope this helps. Saves a couple bucks for somebody. Maybe introduces you to some stuff you didn't know existed. Maybe like these black ladder shorts or even like a $15 setup that's actually pretty durable. Um, these Diamondbacks, they're great. I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep them, but that's about it. And I think that you guys can soak in the information and make some more informed purchases. Thank you.